Sensing defeat, Raila Odinga has gone back to his usual factory settings. Those of you who may be working in CBD, Nairobi town, or perhaps that is your route to work, maybe you pass through there as you go to Westlands and whatnot, you really need to consider finding another route. And here's the reason why. Yesterday, Ray Laudinga's presidential secretariat put out the following statement, and I'll read it for you, quote-unquote. The Azimio La Umoja Coalition Party has planned a series of activities beginning tomorrow, the 28th of August, 2022. Number one, church service at AIC Olympic, 11 a.m. Number two, public rally at Kamkunji Grounds in Kibera, that should be at 1 p.m. The coalition members will also stage a peaceful seven-day vigil at the Supreme Court and all the IEBC offices countrywide. All Azimio leaders, including MCAs, are hereby requested to gather at Jaramogi Oginga Odinga Foundation offices in Nairobi County starting 9 a.m. on the 28th of August 2022 for a briefing. Media is hereby requested to provide coverage for the two events. Signed, Dennis Onsarigo, Press Secretary for the Raila Odinga Presidential Campaign, Secretariat. Now, before we make sense of this press release, if you're here for the first time, just go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you're watching from a different platform, say maybe Telegram or TikTok, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Ofula, I'll be the first one to pop up. Hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton more content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel you really, really need to subscribe to. Now, out of this entire press release, it's just a small bit that caught my attention. Forget the part where they're going for a church service at AIC at 11 p.m. or Kamkunji grounds for a rally at 1 p.m. Actually, at the time of doing this video, it's like 4 p.m. Those activities have already taken place or expired. But there are two directives that the press secretariat has put out that caught my attention. Number one is that all coalition members are to stage a peaceful seven-day vigil at the Supreme Court. And number two, that they are also to perform a vigil at all the IEBC offices countrywide. Now, what exactly is Raylo Odinga and his campaign team trying to achieve through this press release? Number one is that they are trying to put pressure on the Supreme Court justices. You can imagine you're seated inside the Supreme Court. I don't know if you guys have been there, but it's a square. The Supreme Court doesn't have any front or back. There, it has doors on each side. Now imagine you're a Supreme Court justice. You're seated in there. You're listening to James Orengo or Murkomen or any other of the Supreme Court councils. And outside, the building is surrounded by people who are allegedly there for a peaceful vigil. Now here's my question. In the event push comes to shove and the justices give a verdict, that these people outside are not too happy about. Will that vigil remain peaceful? So by doing this, in my opinion, Raila Odinga is making the justices have a distaste towards him and his group because their life is a bit difficult now. Anytime you're pulling into the driveway of the Supreme Court, there's a huge crowd of people every single day and even on your way out. Now, for me, it's a logistical nightmare and it's a security issue and... To the justices, I'm sure they're feeling like these are actual threats more than anything else. And this is not actually the only move that Raila Odinga has done to anger the Supreme Court justices. Remember, he brought a lorry of evidence. Now that might seem comical to most Kenyans, but if you're a Supreme Court justice and you have paralegals working for you and they're combing through all these documents, thousands and thousands and thousands of documents, they naturally have a distaste towards you. Now remember, Kenya Kwanza brought their evidence, it was just a single box, while Raylo Dinga brought an entire lorry and now he's bringing another bus load of people to form a vigil, to, or rather to facilitate a seven-day vigil around the Supreme Court. I don't think that's helpful to his campaign. I don't think that helps him win any justice to his side. And this is an ill-advised move. In my opinion, this is a losing strategy. It's a zero-sum game. Now, the second thing Raylo Dinga is trying to achieve through these directives is issued is to, in my opinion, guard the vote. He's simply trying to guard his vote in areas where elections are yet to take place, like uh, Kakamega and Mombasa, and many other constituencies whereby elections were postponed. Now, Raylo Dinga, in my opinion, and the Azimio group are doing the right thing, but a little bit late. 
There's been a rumor going around that Junette Mohammed and Hassan Joho ate the money for agents, and that is why Azimio didn't have agents. We also heard that Azimio had logistical problems whereby they'll assign agents to a certain polling station, and then the candidate will have a problem with those agents and will want them exchanged for another group, and that kind of commotion caused agents to show up at as late as 11 p.m. or not to show up at all. And then we also have the issue whereby agents were not paid so they simply just turned a blind eye and they were there, WhatsApp, texting, and they're not even bothering with the count because if you don't put money in their pockets, they won't give you any value in return. So Ray Lodinga is basically just trying to guard his vote. However, the part where he confuses me in this press release from his secretariat is whereby they say they want a nationwide vigil on all the IBC offices. Now, if this vigil is only taking place in areas where there's elections, yet to take place, like Mombasa and Kakamega, we can say he's trying to guard his vote. But if it's taking place nationwide, even in areas where elections were concluded, then that simply amounts to intimidation towards the IEBC officials, and he's basically posturing and telling them, hey, you guys try and give any wrong verdict here, you try and make one wrong move, we are on your case. Now, I'd also like to recognize a few people who have been supporting the channel. Mr. Paul Guchumwangi from the US, Frederick Kiuru, Paul Waweru, Hasham Mohammed, Henry Wekesa, Stella Kibugi, and Paul Kamithi. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. You are truly appreciated. Now, if you're here for the first time and you're still yet to subscribe, just hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform and you enjoy the content, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula. I'll be the first one to pop up hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton more content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel you really need to subscribe to. Now, uh, guys, please just leave me a comment in the comment section below. I'd really love to hear your comment on this particular press release from the Secretariat of Raila Odinga and what do you think it means and do you think town is a place to be, especially in this Supreme Court week? I'd really love to hear what you have to say. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. It's always a pleasure to have you. Do have a blessed day. Adios.